Good morning and welcome to today's devotional. Now I don't know about you but I've been listening to a lot of music during lockdown um, and one of the songs that I really like is called Blessed Be Your Name uh, which you can listen to as part of today's service or you can find it on YouTube. Um, this song is written by Matt and Beth Redman and it's all about praising God whatever happens whether it's good or bad. Um, and Matt Redmond's written a little bit about how he wrote the song um, in his book called Blessed Be Your Name. I'm just going to read a little bit from chapter two. On September the 15th, 2001, we flew into LA for the start of the sabbatical break in California. Four days earlier, we'd watched with the rest of the world gripped by those terrible nation-shaking events of 9-11. Over the next few days and weeks in the US, as we watched the news, talked with neighbours and visited many different churches, the full effect of the terrorist attacks began to unfold before us. Brokenness was everywhere and many people sought some kind of comfort in the church. Our landlady, which just weeks before had relocated to Manhattan, set foot inside a church building for the first time since her childhood. For the few weeks following those attacks, church attendance all over America went up dramatically. During this time, we had the privilege of visiting many different congregations. We were so inspired and impressed by the preachers. Virtually everywhere we went, pastors delivered biblical and powerful sermons, speaking into the pain of the nation. They eloquently and powerfully expressed the heart of God over a shocked and vulnerable people and reminded them of his strength and sovereignty. But nearly everywhere we visited, a worrying question began to arise. Where were the songwriters at such a time as this? A few weeks after 9-11, we wrote the worship song, Blessed Be Your Name. It wasn't written consciously in response to those dark events. But no doubt, being immersed in the spiritual and emotional climate of those days was an important factor in birthing it. Many people ask if there was a particular life event that triggered off the writing of this song. And in all truth, the answer is no. It's really a song born out of the whole of life. A realisation that we will all face seasons of pain or unease. And in these seasons, we will need to find our voice before God. Now, the, the whole song and everything, it just made me think about Paul and Silas when they were imprisoned um, and they were singing um, in the prison. Even though all the terrible things that had happened to them, they were still praising God. And so we're just going to read about that now from Acts chapter 16. Verse 16 to 34. Thanks. Verse 16. Once, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted to the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune time. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, Lord, men are servants of the Most High God. We are telling you, to are telling you, the way to be saved. He kept this up for many days. Then Paul began to cover the back, turn around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of it. At the moment the spirit left her, from the owners of the slave got realized that the whole of making money was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dropped them into the marketplace to fish with authority. They brought them before the night is great and brought them these men are doors and uh, throwing our city into an uproar by a, as well as keeping customs on law for what wrong to accept or practice. Yeah. Yeah. Praise. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrate. After they had been suddenly flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to take to cause them carefully upon receiving such orders he put them in inner cells and fastened their feet in socks after midnight 
Paul and Silas were praying on singing hymns to God and then suddenly there was a, such a volunteer earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken at once. All the prison door flew open and everyone came, came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called Philip, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and his sailors. He brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in your Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him. And all the night the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were back to baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had be he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Thank you very much for that reading. So Paul had a really eventful life. Um, he was put in prison at least four times shipwrecked three times and he even got bitten by a poisonous snake. But Paul didn't care what happened to him. He was just so happy that he knew God and his main aim in life was to praise God and tell everyone else about him. Um, which makes me think about how, how do we react to crises when things go wrong for us. Um, I don't know if anyone's been reading the bulletin but Mick's written some uh, interesting things lately on how the church reacts to uh, crises and it's true that people around us are always watching us as Christians and um, to watch how we react to things. Now humans we all have very different ways of reacting to things and we don't always react the way that Jesus would react but if we are Christians we can ask God to help us to respond in a good way. Um, because Paul and Silas trusted in God, they chose not to focus on their unfair treatment, but they focused on God instead. <clears throat> they knew that God was powerful, and they knew that Jesus had suffered far more than they had when he was crucified on the cross. And because they chose to worship and praise God in their difficulties, instead of getting bogged down, it caused all the other prisoners um, to listen to them as they prayed and sang. And the Holy Spirit enabled Paul and Silas to be a witness for Jesus to all these prisoners and to the jailer himself. Now many people have been blessed by the song that Matt Redman wrote and um, also through the singing of Paul and Silas the jailer and his entire household were saved. And it just makes me think about how do we react when difficult things happen in our lives? And let's just pray that God will help us to trust him and keep praising him. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love for us. And thank you that if we are Christians, we know that you will always be with us to help us. And please help us to remember to trust you whatever happens in life. In Jesus' name, Amen. And thank you to Philip, Ben and Praise for helping out with the readings. It was really nice of you. Thank you.